Um, hey guys, what is up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the mindset that you should have when you're about to go into a redesign of a website or a web app. Okay. The strategy and the mindset to approach a redesign of a website or a web app. Now this is for anyone that's in the product development space. You can be a product designer, UX designer, UX researcher, engineer. At some point in your career, you're going to come across it. You're going to be in a team environment or you're going to be asked to, you know, what should we do to redesign this app, redesign this site? Okay. Now this topic came about because a designer approached me, was given a designer in my network on LinkedIn was given a design exercise during an interview. All right. And in the design exercise, the instructions were to look at this website and you pick, you know, the instructions was for the designer to pick and choose anything that they would change about this web app and come up with some, you know, show your visual and your UX design skills and share that with the team, right? That was the design exercise. Now, this could be a trick question for a, a folks who haven't gone through this or don't have any experience in UX design. Also, this, this came to mind because not just this designer or this, this designer asked or reached out to me and asked me for help, like saying, Hey Mike, what would you do differently? Because they showed me uh, the work that they did. They did not get the job. And so I was able to kind of review what they did, review the instructions and kind of give them some feedback on what I would do differently. In addition, this comes to mind because I was at, I was in a situation where I was at work at ADP and my boss, my VP was adamant about making some changes to a particular um, application within our product suite. This VP wanted to make a splash to his senior executives and was asking us, our team asking me to change things up. We need to come up with new designs. Now in some situations you just got to go at it and start doing some stuff because your boss is asking for some changes and you just got to go with it. But the real way to approach a redesign, whenever you're being asked to critique a web app or website, if somebody ever asks you to critique this website, it could be a trick question, especially if the web app or website is fairly designed pretty well right? You might be changing things up and then you might fail the test. The truth of the matter is number one rule, you should not ever modify, change, tweak a design or a web app or website drastically without first knowing the user's pain points. All right. If you don't know that this website or web app isn't working well, then why are you changing it? Right? Maybe 99% of the user base love this particular application. So why are you just making assumptions and going out and running full force and changing it? So the number one rule is you can't change anything if you don't know what the user's pain points are. All right. That's the number one rule. So somebody say, well, Mike, what's the point? Well, that is the right way. That is the right answer. Before you change anything on a web app, first understand who's using it how they're using it, what their pain points are, what they like about it, what they dislike about it. Once you figure that information out, you're now making intelligent choices and go back to your lab and make some modifications based on a collective serving of the user base. So however you want to slice it, that's the number one proper approach strategy. Don't touch it, right? We don't know what we might mess things up. If we, if we screw, if we change some things just based on our assumptions, then we might screw up the user experience and piss off a lot of people. So that's the right answer. But the other way is, so how, what do you do at this point? Do you just say, Hey, I can't do anything. Let's walk away. Nothing can be changed because I don't know what the user's pain points are, you know, so let's not do anything. No, there's a few more things that you can do. First thing you can do, first thing is don't touch it drastically, right? Because you don't know what the user's pain points are. Number two, go for the low hanging fruit, go for the low hanging fruit. What I mean by the low hanging fruit is what you have to do is think about web standards that you have been accustomed to over the past 10 years or so, right? On the web, what 
are you accustomed to and does this website or web app line up to those standards. If the menu was in a bad place, maybe you can modify the menu a little bit, but based on certain standards. If the search box was in a place that wasn't ideal and standard based on what you see out on the web, maybe you can modify that. Maybe you can change some lingo or some verbiage on some of the buttons. Also, the visual design. Is it up to date? You know, based on the current standard and trends that are out there, vibrant colors, white space, soft drop shadow, rounded corners, you know, elegant modern design. Is that app up to date based on those standards? So you can keep an entire UX in place and modify the app or website based on low hanging fruit, things that are just pinpoint obvious. When you say low hanging fruit, it's like things that are so easy that you just have to make those changes and or making those changes will almost guarantee not disrupt anybody's user experience. Like I'll give you an example of a low hanging fruit. One day I was working on an app at ADP and I was looking around as a user, I was looking around for the search or for the print button and I couldn't find it. So I had to go and grab the product owner. I said, where's the print button on this page? So she showed me, she goes, you got to click on this little thing over here and a drop down up here and that's where the print option is. And so the low hanging fruit in that situation is, wait a minute, as a user, if I just brought that print button out of the drop menu and place it on the page somewhere, if another user like myself is looking for the print option, they won't, they'll look around and, and eventually find the print button, right? Or the print icon. They won't ever get into a dead end situation where they're like, hey, I, I just give up. I don't know where the print option is, right? So that's, a lo that's an example of a low hanging fruit. If you make that change or something like that, you can only improve, you won't hurt the user experience. So that's it. That's the approach you have to take with every redesign of a website or web app. Number one rule is you don't change anything unless you know what the user's pain points are. And number two, you can change things, but they have to be low hanging fruit examples. And these things can be based on just common sense, web standards, and improving the visual UI design that can also, if done well, can enhance the user experience. Anyway, I just wanted to shoot this video because this exercise came through. I just recorded a almost a 20 minute lesson on my membership where I walk you through this design exercise. I show you what this designer did and I showed you a redesign of what I did and how I would propose this and the thought process that I went through as I made these proposals and these design changes. You can get access to that right now on my website at MLUX Academy on my membership. Just click on the membership, sign up today, 14 days free. You can watch that video today. It's a 20 minute lesson full of golden nuggets. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for supporting my YouTube channel. If you like the videos and things I talk about, hit the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions or visit my site, MLUX Academy, and click on the contact link there and shoot me a question. I'll be happy to answer that for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.